a good image for, what, for the way sin works in the world is what if we throw a big rock into a lake? Well, two things happen. One, there's a big splash, the event itself. And from that event, throwing a brick or a boulder, whatever you can toss, into the lake, out go concentric rings across the lake. They tell me those are shock waves. Okay, it's a good word, shock waves. Because when we toss sin into the lake of life, bad, big time shock waves go out. It depends, you know, the waves are bigger right there, first closest to the incident. But in the lake, you know, those waves go all the way out to the edge. Everything in the lake is affected by that scene. And every life, kind of like chaos theory, you know, where the butterfly flaps its wings in Japan and the cyclone blows up in Los Angeles. You know, there's something about everything we do that changes the world a little bit. After just a little while, no matter what we do, we have affected much, if not all, of the world. Everything we say and do causes some sort of a splash. You know, we think that we're safe if we only think about bad things. But we're not. Because if you think about, you know, somebody aggravates you, you just want to throttle them. Anybody ever have that problem? Huh? Okay, well what happens if we think about, you know, I just want to grab him by his little pencil neck and wring it in two. <laughs> I remember Flip Classy, yes I do. When we think those kinds of thoughts, we build up some anger in ourselves that winds up getting pitched out on somebody. Maybe not the person whose little neck we want to ring, but somebody. And there goes that splash, and the effect of the sin that was only in our head wound up being a sin that worked out through word or deed that affected someone else. So we have to be real careful about what we pitch into the lake of life. Sometimes, whether they're good or bad, that we pitch out into the lake of life, the waves are so strong, they hit the edge of the lake and they bounce back and wash over us. That doesn't happen all the time, and whether it does or not, our job as Christians is to make sure that the rocks we throw in the lake send out shockwaves of the love of Jesus Christ that He has shown us when He died for us on the cross. You know, Jesus did not convince anybody to be His follower by banging them over the head with a scroll. We will not convince anybody to become Christians by banging them over the head with a Bible either. That doesn't work. <coughs> what works is showing the love of God in our lives all the time. Now, Jesus was not powerless like we are. He could have done something about the bad thing that happened to him. But he didn't. We can take revenge for the bad things that happened to us, like what he would have done. But, like we should follow his example and not. Jesus looked down from that cross to guys who just nailed three nails through his hands and feet. Think about how that feels for a second. Stepped on a nail before? Try hanging from that thing. <coughs> Jesus looked down at those guys and prayed for them. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. So when we get aggravated, irritated, wounded, injured, sinned upon by someone else, Jesus says our job is to pray for them because they wouldn't do that if they really knew what they were doing. Now, part of the reason, remember what I told the kids this morning, 
that we talk about sin and we ought to talk about sin and we've got to get our mind wrapped around this is that there is absolutely nothing we can do about the sin that is going to bring the bad thing to us. People out there, us included from time to time, are pitching sinful actions into the lake of life. And those waves are going to wash over us sometime, most days. It's how we act when they do that shows our Christianity. When the bad thing happens to us, do we pray, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing? Or do we want to get even? I don't get mad, I get even. How many other things? No, I don't get mad, I pray for them. That's our response. Four Sunday in a row. I never promised you this would be easy. Jesus didn't either. It's tough to look at somebody who has sinned against you, stolen your money, shot your wife, whatever you can imagine so bad you would just want to wring your head right off their shoulders. They've done it to you. And if you would be Christian, you would pray for them and not take revenge. Not easy. It's what Jesus did and what he calls us to do. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If there's one here this morning who is not, who is a baptized Christian and not a member of this fellowship, and you hear Jesus Christ call on you to join together with us in worship and service to his holy name, join me here at the front as we sing our hymn of invitation, I gave my life for thee, number 417. If you are a baptized Christian and a member of this congregation, and you hear Jesus Christ calling on you to rededicate yourself to his service, there will never be a better day than this to reclaim Jesus Christ as your Lord, the one who leads and guides your life. And if you have never been baptized, and you hear Jesus Christ calling on you to dedicate your life to him, to following Him as Lord and accepting Him as your Savior. Join me here at the front and make that good confession. Accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord today as we stand and sing number 400.